Okay, so I'm going to try something a little bit different. This, I'm going to read a random comic review that I actually wrote for a blog I was doing a few years back. So this was originally uploaded onto the interwebs on Monday, July the 12th, 2010. And I'm just going to read it pretty much the way I have it. Um, I'm going to read it pretty much the way I wrote it here. Okay, so it's random comics review, Kazar the Savage, 23... 1983. Okay, we have two stories in this one. The art in the main feature is by Bob Hall and Armando Gill, and the art in the second feature is by Val Mayerick. The writing in both is by Bruce Jones. The first story opens in Casablanca as Kazar is chasing a man to steal a package from him. Kazar beats up some thugs who are also after the same package. Kazar grabs the package and takes it to a man in the bar. The package is a secret explosive. We also meet the man's boss, an evil woman named Ramona. We learn that she is an ex-AIM agent who's behind this all. She and her men previously captured Kazar and placed a device in his head that forces him to do their bidding. Uh, there's a cameo by Spider-Man. Shana, uh, Shana the She-Devil is staying with Peter Parker and thinks that Kazar is dead as a result of a previous flight with Kraven the Hunter or something. The story ends to be continued as Kazar and Ramona are crossing the desert about to be ambushed by other bad guys. It would be interesting to see how certain aspects of the story would be received today. At one point, Ramona tries to seduce Kazar. When he rejects her, she threatens to activate a device in Kazar's brain. Uh, nothing is explicit, or yeah, nothing is explicit. Nothing explicit is shown or stated. Uh, the reader is left to infer what happened, but essentially Ramona coerced Kazar into having sex with her. I believe many people today would consider this rape. The story doesn't seem to treat this like that big of a deal. Kazar shook up a little, but the story treats it. Uh, just like uh, it's just another rotten thing that he has to do along with all the stealing and beating people up. Another interesting thing is why it's, uh, well, it's so obvious I'm not sure if it's a mistake or if it was done on purpose. When Kazar is in the streets fighting and running, he's barefoot. When he meets his contact at the bar, he's wearing shoes. There is a caption at the top of the panel that reads, and shortly, suggesting that some time has passed, but is the reader supposed to think that Kazar just stopped at a store somewhere and purchased some footwear? The backup story is Tales of Zabu. It's a past tale of Kazar as a boy. Basically, a caveman stabs Zabu, the saber-toothed tiger, with a spear and then kidnaps young Kazar to raise as his own. It ends with a page depicting Zabu laying on the ground with a spear sticking out of him as the rain falls. It's kind of corny, but it is kind of sad. All in all, it's not a groundbreaking issue, but it is a solid old-school adventure comic with a little Bronze Age campiness. Some of it's intentional, some of it's not thrown in there. Okay, that's it. I got to thank you very much for listening, and everybody have a good day.